again one more time welcoming all of you thank you so much for being here and uh, um showing so much of love and support uh to all of us i i one question which is so alive within me this moment is um uh, i also be, before i begin i also want to share that uh, for about 15 20 minutes i am going to ask questions from dr vipin but meanwhile if you have any questions you can you know start typing it in the comments and we'll see like you know we can maybe in the process we'll just keep taking up questions or maybe we can in the end like you know after 20 minutes we can just take all your questions so you can just keep noting your questions down uh, and like how i said in the beginning make the most of this one hour with dr vipin <laughs> so uh, dr vipin i would uh, because my work also somewhere re- like you know revolves around body mm-hmm. so um, how is your relationship with your body yeah uh, share a bit about that yeah so uh body is a big reality and we live through the body and be- body is our real apparatus once body is not there you are not there you are not existing and uh, incidentally i don't believe in things like rebirth or soul or something like that so so i i'm clear into that that once your body is gone you are gone forever you would remain here in some way that uh, maybe you are like uh, turned to some minerals or some ash and that mineral or ash remains there or maybe you were having some thoughts of somebody and is speaking through your mouth and somebody listened them so your thoughts would remain in in some people's mind and and things might so that's the continuous flow the material and the the thoughts are the continuous flow but your whole being as you are today is really the body is the reflection and that's why the body is extremely important because if there is no body you are not there unfortunately uh we have uh, uh we are not living in our whole body most of the humans are not living in their whole body they are just living in one part of the body and the sphere in the brain and uh, and the rest of the body most of the people are just using as as a i would say transportation for this <laughs> or as as a tripod stand or or a bipod stand for this so somehow uh, uh that ne- that i think is a big departure uh, uh that we need to proportionately live our uh, in enti- an entire body and uh, uh as the nature dev- got evolved uh, so there are two major uh, kingdoms of the life the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom we fall in the animal kingdom and all animals are supposed to be moving most of the time they could be sleeping and resting as well but most of the time they are supposed to be moving not sitting and this is where we have hugely departed we have become like plants plants are designed to sit at one place their whole life and that's what human have gone to we are sitting all the time we are sitting in the classrooms we are sitting in the office we are sitting in the home and we are sitting in this meeting that's so like <laughs> uh, i resonate with each and every word that you've just shared so um because like you shared in the main room that how your journey you were in a typical like you know a uh, conventional world and now you're here in this whole journey of healing and um uh, you know in a in an absolutely different space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so for you how how has that journey been or how has yeah. that transition been for you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. because you you've actually experienced both the worlds mm-hmm. yeah uh so well uh, uh my parents uh, like uh, any any parents they they wanted to for me to have some kind of ascertained career a certain livelihood and uh, when i was growing up uh, the education was something very very important and aur uh, balki ek kahawat hoti thi ki padhoge likhoge to banoge nawab 
और बाकी कुछ मतलब खेलोगे कूदोगे या उसका मतलब बाकी आप कुछ भी करोगे तो गड़बड़ होगा तो तो दी एजुकेशन एंड दी फॉर्मल एजुकेशन वाज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट एंड सो आई वेंट टू दी स्कूल एंड कॉलेज एंड एवरीथिंग एंड वी जस्ट केप्ट ऑन चूजिंग व्हाट इज गुड सो या दिस वॉज अपीलिंग टू मी मीन माई my family was having a medical store so i was interested in medicines so i chose the pharmaceutical sector and then i had all my education in that and then i started working as a scientist or as a professor so i enjoyed that for quite a lot of time uh, because uh, that was all fascinating work uh, but then uh, at the end uh, i started realizing that uh, most of the medicines are doing more damage actually medicines are now considered to be the third biggest killer of mankind there are so much adverse effects and things are associated with that so then i realized that uh, maybe i'm not moving in the right direction and uh, then medicines are actually not making people healthy uh, they can at least at the most they can manage the disease that if you are a diabetic then keep on keep popping this pill whole your life or if you are having hypertension keep on on popping this pill whole life or things like that so you can manage your disease with a lot of medicines and restrictions and that was somehow why little unacceptable to me so then i and i also had actually got little fed up with that formal things and job and all those things so i just wanted to take a break and uh, see the life differently because uh, uh i was always carrying a realization that it's only one life span and you got to live your life fully in that span only and so so i have been believing that you got to keep on changing maybe your profession or occupation also if you want to experience many many things so that way i i made a change initially actually this change was difficult uh, for uh, for a couple of years i have always been thinking and comparing things did i do the right thing by quitting the job that too when i was almost at the peak of my career i was doing so well that uh, uh, i was invited by the royal swedish academy of sciences uh, the uh, the academy which grants the nobel prize uh, <laughs> uh, in 2011 for a lecture in stockholm in the nobel museum and they have identified me from uh, in a from asia they have identified three persons one from china another one from japan and i was representing this this reason so i was really doing well career wise but somehow i was getting disenchanted by that formal research uh, the way the data are manipulated for the commercial interest and actually things not doing well and um, all also from the corporate life and uh, also i have been a professor and then i was also getting disenchanted with the education also that it's a little too much we put into the head of the people which uh, very little of that is useful and and i was getting a realization that universities are basically primarily designed for the professors to keep their jobs <laughs> so, so so that way i i really wanted to to look at other things something other than the education education something other than that pharmaceutical sector so that's how i took a plunge and then i started experimenting and somehow they they went well and uh, i started discovering that what uh, what uh, the system we are evolving it's not only working it's working very fast also it's not that it's slow acting it's this very fast acting also so that way uh, it has been uh, motivating stimulating encouraging uh so this this is how it has been happening mm. so um just uh, because you mentioned that you know you were at the peak of your career and yeah. everything was mm-hmm. going so beautifully in your life yeah and then you just i i i can i can just just mention one more thing when i i left one of, this was the yeah one of the company when i left uh, the 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 owner of the company told me just write your designation and your salary and it's still with us <laughs> hmm so um i also like this just popped up in my head that somewhere because you were um financially in a very like you know you you were sustaining yourself yeah. and somewhere i also 
will use the term privilege mm -hmm. that whatever you you could explore and experiment was yeah. it because of that and like if you could throw some light around that mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that is one thing that uh, I, I was uh, financially, I was okay. I mean, right from childhood. So I, I didn't have any time, any financial pressure. But at the same time, I was extremely interested in the frugality also. And my ways of living used to be very frugal. And my sisters and brothers would always be worried that are you making enough money or not? Why are you not buying new things? Why are you stuck with, with the old stuff? And I'm stuck with uh, so much stuck with the old stuff like the laptop uh, I was using till last uh, week was 14 year old. The phone I'm using, even now this is somebody else's phone, is, is also around uh, 10 year old. Uh, it doesn't have uh, internet. <laughs> so, so even the clothes I would use for several years. I'm, I'm still on my first car, which is. Uh, more than 15 year old. <laughs> so I was into frugality and when you are on, on frugality, your most of the financial fears vanish because you know that you can really live your life comfortably with just little bit of the money. And there is one more thing which I realized that, uh, uh, I mean, mm. whatever you consume, consumes you. Eating is not one way process, it's two way. So, so consumption is also not one way thing that you are consuming. No, it's not one way. It's two way. Whatever you are consuming does consume you. Whatever you are eating does eat you. Now, if we look this in, term, in sense of biology and health, you see, if you eat anything through your mouth, it's a complicated task for the body now to handle that. Now, body has to analyze what is it. Sometimes we are putting up maybe altogether new molecule. There, are, there could be some packaged food which might be having some synthetic material which were never administered to the body or to your body maybe. And then body has to analyze each ingredient, each chemical molecule present there. And then it has to decide what to do of these molecules, whether to digest them, whether to absorb them, or whether to, to vomit them out or whether to flush them out through, through, the, the, through the diarrhea. So it's a complicated method. And if it has to be digested, then body has to design a system system for that, maybe the enzyme system. And then after it has to be handled that what to do of this, how to transform it, how to use it and how to excrete it. So it's extremely complicated task. And it's not only with what you are putting in your body, it's true with whatever you are putting in your head. I would say it's even true with whatever you are bringing at your home. So stuff actually eats you, consumes you. You think that you are consuming things, but it's a two-way process and things start consuming you. So I had a realization and I always used to feel very comfortable in having very minimalistic life, having very, very, very few things or nothing around. So, so that way, that also gave me a lot of, uh, I would say actually, it was because of my distance that I was not having the financial fears. Not because of the money I had. It was because of this, because I knew that I can manage with very little. And I also, because I was working with the health. So I knew that what you need most of the money is for the food and, and for the health. And if you know the trick of the health, then really you don't need to worry. And, and the, the worry of a health is a big thing because that, uh, that could be a big financial burden at any point of time. Uh, with the people like uh, you go to any hospital and you may end up spending 15 lakhs, 30 lakhs or like or, or maybe your your lifelong savings into that. So because of that, because of having enjoyed the frugality and also being able to to handle that stuff of uh, the health and having got a confidence now that I can take care of my health and uh, it doesn't need money. That make made me uh, financially safe and sound and confident and I that that's how I believe that anybody can feel financially safe and confident if they look go to these ways without accumulating large sums of money um, Dr. Vipin I have a few questions may I? Yes sir. Yeah so uh, I would like to understand you know there is much debate now currently between medicine, medicine approach of medicine vis-a-vis -vis approach of health mm -hmm. 
and they being i mean uh, i'm a non bio student and my knowledge of biology was zilch mm-hmm. has been zilch but i'm increasingly sensing that you know don't uh, confuse medicine with health that is so can you kind of talk about a few fundamental principles yeah. around that because mm-hmm. a lot of us have myths mm-hmm. and second thing is uh, you know we hear a lot about uh, uh, when i was a kid there used to be tb and mm-hmm. after that there is mdr tb mm-hmm. and later when i started working there is xtr tb if i'm not wrong mm-hmm. so what is happening there and why have diseases like cancer become so prevalent or is it like now they are being diagnosed so what is happening in all of this space mm-hmm. yeah sure good question thank you very much uh, actually this is the fundamental thing uh you see so so there are two ways of looking at the things one is this that you can look at from the health viewpoint and second is this that you can look at from the disease viewpoint now the pharmaceutical approach or the medicinal approach is this that you look from the disease point that what are the problems and you then you try to develop some kind of a solution to that so that is the pharmaceutical or medical approach uh, and that approach uh, is a kind of a piecemeal approach that because in that case you got to develop something for each symptom or each disease suppose if you are having four diseases then you might require to visit four different doctors and each doctor may prescribe you three different pills and there could be a dozen of pills you will be popping up and each pill directing something directing to the cholesterol something to the blood pressure something to the blood sugar or something uh, to to your to your acidity which these pills will cause and things like that so uh so this is this is the disease approach now the second approach is the health approach the health approach is this that if you restore the health of any individual then the diseases would disappear if you and there are principles there are ways to restore the health and that's what we are working uh, that you restore the health and the diseases would disappear that like i would share one of my experience one person came to me he was having the diabetes and hypertension both and he said because for the hypertension he is under observation with a very very highly renowned physician so he would not like his hypertension to be interfered by any means but he said he want his diabetes to go away i said we cannot do it because what we would be doing we would be restoring your health so your all the diseases would disappear i cannot selectively make one disease disappear your all the diseases would disappear so this is yes this is a real problem that this is one approach is a pharmaceutical approach which is coming through pro- from the viewpoint of diseases and second approach is the health approach which is uh, other approach now incidentally what happened that uh, all the developments and uh, you see uh, the pharmaceutical companies have actually hijacked not only the doctors they have hijacked the medical science itself so so you need you uh, there are only certain things that, that uh, the research about that would be funded and that's how the science is progressing uh, and and that's how it has become so much uh, focused on the diseases uh, whereas now you look all the modern diseases most of the modern diseases are the lifestyle diseases and nobody is paying attention to the lifestyle diseases the doctors are not at all trained for the lifestyle to the extent that uh, at least in our country in india the data of indian medical association says that the doctors in india live 10 year less than a common person in india so because that lifestyle element is completely missing for that from that that education so they are not be even being able to put into their own life and that that's how it's all happening and uh, we are messing up more and more with our uh, lifestyle and what is the lifestyle actually we are designed for a natural world our genome or or the dna you would say you see there are many many changes that that can take place many kind of evolution can take place one is biological the second could be the psychological or third could be the technological or the way you live or the way you do the things 
Now, psychological and technological changes could take place very fast, but biological change takes place at its own pace because it requires change in the DNA and that requires several generations. So, our body, our living, everything was designed for a natural world because we humans live, live in the natural world all the time. It's only from last few decades that we have cut off completely from the nature. And as I see now, most of our, most of our diseases, I would say, are the diseases, are the deficiency of the wilderness, are the diseases, deficiency of the natural element. So if, and, and it's true, we are just seeing it, that people just by coming in this space get well because it's full of nature, so you get exposed to the dirt, you get exposed to the germs, you get exposed to the sun, and, and you have all that uncertainty also here, like there is a wildlife, so you are always living in the moment. You cannot afford to think too much of the future or think of the past because there could be a snake around. So, so, so that way you live in the present also, and that synchronizes your body and mind well. And once your body and mind are synchronized well, you even need not to think about the health. The mind will take care of it without even you knowing it subconsciously. That's happening with all the species other than the humans. All the wildlife, they, they don't think what has happened to them. They have some inbuilt mechanism and that mechanism takes place. Like we have a cat here and that cat was attacked by uh, another wild cat. And it was a big attack. The groin area was almost eaten up. Two legs were very badly damaged, and it could barely, barely, I mean, stress, move, naked, pare the cat. But in just few, few, few uh, weeks, not even months, the cat is walking again and hunting again. Thank you so much. Um, because organically, we just move to the questions. Anyone else? Like you've been. Um, like I see the chat flooded with questions. Anyone else who feels like asking a question, what you've written, you can please unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, I would like to ask, uh, like he mentioned that, you know, nobody can just jump into this. Yeah. Uh, so what exactly, what is the background required uh, mm -hmm. to do something similar or even, you know, work in uh, collaboration with you or something? Yeah, of that sure, sure. Thank you. Very good yeah. question. Very apt. Uh, uh, you see, uh, health, health uh, is, is, is a delicate issue and somehow uh, it, it's a little, it could be a little risky affair also and you got to know the things properly. Uh, it's not like uh, a restaurant or, or a food where, I mean, everything is safe and somebody could eat, you could eat uh, one meal. Or, so it's, it's not that. So it's, so it's really little tricky things to do, tricky, tricky things to opt as a career. Uh, it doesn't mean that you need to have a formal education in anything because what, what we are trying to develop are not a part of any education. It's just because... Uh, I have been trained uh, that way, so I'm able to explain the things in that manner. I'm able to look the things in, in that particular uh, way, but uh, there is really no, no, no course that, that fits all those requirements. So, so I won't say that you need to be a biologist or you need to have a proper medical degree before you could think about it or practice about it. No, it's not like this. Uh, but of course, you cannot right away jump into it. Uh, the ideal thing would be that uh, one should apprentice with somebody who is doing this for, uh, for I would say, a couple of years, not, not less than that, and uh, should extensively work on his or her own health first, and uh, should test all those things, and then it should be offered to the others. That's what we do here also. Uh, and there are certain legalities also involved. So, so that's why it becomes a little complicated. Uh, not much is, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, gray and cloudy area also. We also uh, all the time keep on thinking about them. And uh, for that reason, we once announced a fellowship program that people could come to us and they could learn whatever we, have, we know. And then they can start their own thing. We, we somehow 
gave a pause to that fellowship program some uh, some time back because we got engaged in other things but now we are starting that again and we are thinking of uh, having one or two or at the most three fellows to work with us and learn things from us and then start their own thing so uh, i won't say that if you don't have a, a, a degree in life science uh, then you can't do the things no you can there are only selective courses that uh, one need to learn and they, those things could be learned directly from the books or from the online courses available so you know uh, about the body and then uh, you can rest of the things can pick up from somebody who is practicing it uh, like us or somebody practicing in some other way uh, and then of course it would be a lifelong learning because if you also connect it with the modern science then it becomes uh, much more palatable much more acceptable and you also move uh, better in that you also move with uh, more confidence um thank you uh, uh since you mentioned fellowship program one i would like to know where are you based and mm -hmm. how long uh, uh, is your fellowship program yeah so we are based uh, uh, in a place we call the name of our place is sehat one and it's uh, close to bhopal which is the capital city of madhya pradesh so we are about 20 km away from the city and uh, uh, initially when we launched the fellowship program was of 9 months but uh, we are reworking on that uh, and uh, there were three trimesters planned of 3 months each but uh, we have withdrawn that uh, fellowship program and we are again uh, putting together the things and maybe we would be open uh, announcing tho the, those things and second is this that anybody who is interested to us if they 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 reach out to us in person then also we can uh, assess the person and can suggest that what could be the duration for you to 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 be here yeah thank you thank you so much uh, one last question um mm -hmm. so you are dealing with individual people who want to uh, heal themselves who come who have to come and stay with you uh, yes so this is what was our primary model and then because of covid and because of many requests pending we started offering an online module also so now there are two options available we call one module as forest module which is available through campus our campus and second is online module so that you can do at your home uh um, so yes it's uh, now it's available in two ways and we have always been thinking that how this could be uh, more ma made more easily available in an urban setting although we believe that most effective most powerful and the fastest is to go to the forest but many people cannot afford to the to go to the forest so so they need some solution at home at urban setting so we have been thinking and working on them also which can give some relief to them thank you that's why i have a question thanks chin mm -hmm. uh can you tell us a little bit more about like the specific methods and practices that you use in your work mm -hmm. uh like if you can talk about what kind of healing methods you use mm -hmm. and uh, specifically kind of how they are different from other traditional uh, yeah. medicine practices yeah yeah sure and how they related to food as well Yes, sure, certainly. So one thing is this that we don't use any medicine, uh, allopathic, Ayurvedic, homeopathic, nothing. So we don't use any medicine, and uh, the basis uh, is this that we believe that our body is completely self-healing; it can heal to itself. So we are not using any medicine. Number one. Number two, uh, we have little uh, negative bias for things like yoga and meditation. We don't subscribe to those ideas. We find that they are of little value only, and they have been glamorized a lot. And uh, uh, the reason being that many people we receive here are the are the yoga teachers, or they have been doing these things for years, and they became sick of doing those things, and then they arrive to us. so we find that they had little value and they have been um, uh, 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 glamorized a lot uh food of course food is an important element uh but uh, uh, food is uh, we would say is uh, is only a part of the story 
and when you are at sehat one uh, the food becomes almost a material of course but of course we we work a lot through fasting also and it's a long fasting water only fasting we suggest people to go fasting for several weeks not days it's called autophagy the science is called autophagy when you don't eat for several days then your body get lot of resources available for the repair and for the renewal and it all the animals are designed for that and the hibernate in hibernation period lot of repair of the body takes place so you we need to give a break to our body and the break we can give our body is only by stopping the digestive system and maybe slowing down the brain so not unnecessarily thinking or working on brainy things a lot so that's the element and uh, food uh, mm, initially we started working with the food and food used to be a big element of our process but gradually uh, we have found that it has only the limited value uh, why everybody is talking of the food because food is something that you can buy you can consume uh, but uh, i would say it's only only 1/4 or 1/5 of the story and you can't really achieve the full health uh, through the health a uh, food food uh, good food is required but the food uh, can take you only to to certain extent so what we are focusing a lot is uh, is we call the three elements we call the we call that them cna also community nature and autophagy so community is we have the whole setup is like this that you don't come here as a consumer or, or as a customer you come here as a community member Uh, so there is no concept of a service or or a servant. Uh, so everybody just shares the things. Uh, second is a uh, nature. So through nature we don't mean the green being the nature or the garden being the nature. We means the, the when things are left uh, with the freedom the way they are, then it's the nature. So the wilderness is a very big element for us. So here we don't have things nicely arranged. we have most of the things are wild like grass is growing as they want to grow the bush is growing as they want to grow we just make make minimum intervention so that it becomes reasonably safe for us and uh, mm, uh and we we give lot of uh, importance to the sun and to the soil uh, we love the germs a lot and there has been a big misunderstanding that the germs are bad for life actually germs are essential for the life uh, the life is completely impossible without the germs so we try to enhance the microbiota we also have very different opinion about the sanitization we feel that cleanliness actually is the cause of many many diseases including the vitamin b12 deficiency so so this is how it's it's very different from other we don't consider being uh, we don't like being uh, uh, related to with the naturopathy also because uh, we are much different from that uh, we we think that in naturopathy you try to consume the nature and you try to bring the nature to you for your your service uh, you don't go to the nature so so we don't even call our place a naturopathy place and also the practices are not there so this is a much different thing thank you um, are there any initial uh, you know resources books that one can read because i did hear much about the gut biome mm -hmm. and also about autophagy yeah. and how autophagy has something to do with the diabetes i think mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes i'm not wrong yeah. but that has been you know sprinkling here and there if there are any um, book which is about this philosophy that will be of great help yeah. so i would say that uh, this is something very old and extremely new and even don't uh, i mean so there is hardly any stuff available and things are only just little bit and they sprinkled here and there only and we also keep on sprinkling when we get any idea we just make some video and then we just make the information public so the moment we get anything in our head and we test that it's working then we make it public so so of course I, there is nothing very comprehensive available uh, you will find that in bits and pieces here and there yeah uh, may i ask something yeah yeah sure hi hi dr vipin this is kalyan yeah, uh -huh. uh, 
great to hear your journey and the thoughts uh, i just wanted to uh, know regarding the legalities that you take care of uh, what is the view point on the legality yeah. because i'm also yeah. in the similar path but i don't mm-hmm. take uh, uh, like customized health for problems but the mass counseling and uh, workshops i take mm-hmm. so yeah. i would like to hear from you yes, the legal course. so so health is a regulated profession and uh, our law doesn't allow anybody to practice health unless you are a registered uh, practitioner and are under the law recognized so that is it uh so how do we operate and we always keep on asking this question from us can we do these interventions or not so how do we operate is this that uh, uh, Incidentally, I am from pharmaceutical sector, so I am an expert on medicines, and uh, I can really look and comment on whatever medicines are being consumed. Uh, so legally, I am entitled, and technically, I am I am having that expertise. So that is one thing. Second element is this that uh, we always try to keep. Uh, we always say to the people coming here that please keep your physician in the loop. so so yes yes so we always ask uh, the patients to keep the physician in the loop and the uh, third thing is this that we always ask them to sign a waiver that they are waiving their all uh, medical legal yeah right so this is how we operate we say forget about the health you, even the, we we don't have any assured security also because it's wild and we have no security so you are your own of course of course so so if you are comfortable by doing uh, doing experiment on your and that way we really get only those people who have who are frustrated by trying everything else or or those are the friends uh, of who have immensely got benefited from us only those will come to us and we don't like to to handle too many people we just like to remain limited only to few people and uh, uh, we are not uh, at all concerned about the size of operation i mean uh, so that's that's not at all a kind of a parameter but uh, sometimes we start thinking of uh, uh, looking at person's carbon footprints also like if somebody is taking uh, securing health from us we would I like him to understand that the real fee if he would pay to us would be that if he or she reduces the carbon footprint after becoming healthy because earlier there have been cases that people were having diabetes and they were about to die when they came to us and then they became well and immediately after becoming healthy they wanted to buy a new car or or get a new house built it or or to go on overseas travel i said no Uh, we, we don't i mean uh, this is this is not <laughs> the right thing to do you must cut down your carbon footprint so now of course we are little sensitive to to that talk so that what kind of to what kind of people we are offering these things so so because of our our, our terms are like that that only very genuine kind of uh, or keenly interested kind of a people they they walk into us a small number and we are happy with that so how do you evaluate them by through personal in- interview or you have a questionnaire or uh, what is the- yes i mean so before arriving here they have uh, there would be many phone calls made and forms filled and uh, yeah things like that happen Last and now question. we are actually actually thinking of uh, of uh, uh, making a, some kind of uh, online participation to be a prerequisite before you arrive here thank you thank you last question uh, you are talking about the food so i'd like to uh, understand your view point about a good food yeah uh, like a day long uh, diet maybe if you can share that what could be a good food for a general person sure sure sure, sure. so food uh, why why do we need to eat there are several reasons to it one and the most fundamental reason for eating is the nutrition second is you want to eat because you are stressed or you are sad or you are getting bored and third is when you are sitting in the company of people 
and togetherness becomes much more intimate when shared over the food. Like in this Zoom meeting, we are not having the food. <laughs> so, so, so there are many reasons why people eat. And most of the people are now addicted to food. There is addiction to the food. So because the food is designed in such a way that it makes you addicted. Number two, people are really sad and that they want to drive their all the pleasures through the food. They, they don't have other means of becoming healthy. So there is a lot of pressure on the food. So in my opinion, the food should be primarily consumed for nutrition, like 80% of your intention should be nutrition. Only 20% could be uh, for, for relishing it and for uh, company, you know, for togetherness, but 80% of it should be for uh, um, the nutrition. From the nutrition viewpoint, I'm of the firm opinion that uh, you can have your internal forest of or farm and you can actually have most of your micronutrient requirement fulfilled through that farm and that farm could be inside your body on your skin there could be a lot of germs and those germs could make a lot of nutrients most of the vitamins so most of your vitamins could come from the germs uh, particularly the vitamins of B group and then a bigger elements, bigger nutrition are actually the air, water, and sunshine. These are much bigger nutrients than the solid food we eat. So solid food is also important, but uh, much more important is the good air and water and the sunshine and a lot of germs. So they are a bigger story of the food. Uh, so if you take care of the bigger story, the the minor story doesn't matter much like i for myself i don't bother much what i'm eating in terms of solid food uh only thing i take care is this that i don't eat the processed highly processed food or packaged food and i don't uh, eat the fried stuff so that's what i do and I, if, if i get an opportunity to eat raw more i would just go for the raw more but uh, my bottom line is this, that my own food is very simple. Like when I'm managing my own food as a person, then uh, I mean, uh, my food will not take more than half an hour's time. Managing food will not take more than half an hour of a day. So I'm completely against of that system that you spend four or five or six or some people even eight or 10 hours in managing food. And sometimes it's not only one person, maybe three, four persons are involved in, in food. So food should be a minor story. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Nikhil, would you like to ask your question or do you want me to read out your question? You can, yeah, you can unmute yourself. And... Uh, hi, Dr. Vipin. Uh, it was nice to hear the your story. And uh, most of the, uh, the specific question which I wanted to ask because the general interventions which you try at your like uh, work on uh, you have already answered. I was mm -hmm. specifically asking about uh, like allergic asthma because in urban settings nowadays yeah. the pollution levels are so high mm -hmm. and many of the people uh, are facing this allergic mm -hmm. rhinitis or asthma yeah. kind of thing. So uh, on that if you can uh, some Thank you. Yes, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And uh, I really fear that this year could is could be very difficult for for people for the respiratory things because most uh, people have already been infected by the COVID, whether you know or not. Most of the people have been infected, and um, of most of the people's uh, lungs have been compromised, and the infection is, is still in the progress, and uh, and the remaining one will also get infected, and then there would be more compromise on the health, um, more compromise on the lungs. So respiratory diseases, the asthma or whatever. So so those complications are going to get compounded in this year. Uh, so 
everybody need to pay more attention for the respiratory health and uh, there is one element which is called cardio respiratory reserve and that is the additional capacity or reserve capacity of your heart and lungs that should be people should be working to enhance that cardio respiratory reserve so if you have good cardio respiratory reserve and if you are uh, infected by a virus or uh, go to the pollution and if there is some damage to your lungs or even to heart then you don't suffer much but if your cardio respiratory reserve is very thin very little then uh, right away or after the infection you might require to to get the oxygen or to go to the ventilator and you could be under a serious trouble so that should be there now in particularly to the allergies and asthma uh, what uh, we believe is this that our immune system is extremely messed up is extremely messed up and because of that there are now many many autoimmune or immune related diseases coming up and allergies and asthma are immune related diseases if not directly the, the autoimmune so we need to retrain our uh, uh, immune system to be to become again uh, i would say um, uh, 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 to again become uh, intelligent to be able to differentiate what is good and what is bad how much response is good and when it is the under response or, and when it is the hyper activity so that uh, way we need to make our uh, uh, immune system smart and intelligent once again and how can you make your uh, immune system uh, smart and intelligent is by cutting down on the hygiene if you are more exposed to the germs minor injuries bruises cuts mud then your immune system is more extrovert it is more looking to the external world uh, in a better way and it really becomes much more intelligent and second is this that uh, uh, autophagy or the fasting also helps and we have been founding here that we received many people with the allergies and asthma here and in just few days uh, they realized that they don't need to use any inhaler or any medicine uh, because they are able to breathe easily thank you thank you so much yeah, for your response that's just so incredible and i'm just so tempted to come and spend <laughs> some time with you with the other one <laughs> so yeah anyone else has a question yeah with yeah, sure. yeah i have a question uh, hello dr vipin yeah hi um so you also mentioned uh, because of covid situation you are offering online services mm -hmm. so how do we get in touch with you um Yeah, so we have a website. It's called sehatone.in. Yes. Okay. Okay. So everything so, is available on the website. All right. Okay. So, so you uh, you can uh, uh, offer services which is suitable for urban setting as well. You mentioned. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. And and, and the, uh, I'll, uh, before anybody asks a new question, I also like to uh, see. I've been a little. Uh, negative or make posing like this that this could be a complicated and difficult career choice now i like to put one more statement and that statement is this that health is a real wealth so if you are in a health career or profession then in in a proper way then of course you are able to take care of your own health also which in itself is a big incentive Can I ask a question now? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I was really very really impressed by your talk, and I am actually just a lay person. <laughs> I'm about sixty. Mm -hmm. I have not ever eaten medicines, but of the last two three years, I seem to have a little complication of BP and diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very keen to come. to your place and stay mm -hmm. now what are the logistics and all of course i will ask on email mm -hmm. but what is the number of days i should think i should really set aside to come 
Mm -hmm. Will it be 15 days? I hear it is 21 days. Mm -hmm. Will uh, I also have a sleeping problem and eating problem? I'm a little overweight. So would your place be able to uh, take care of me? And I'm not fussy at all on food. If you give me grass to eat, I'll eat grass. Mm -hmm. So I'm not fussy eater, even if yeah. you say yeah, yeah. Ke khane. yeah. So and and we, we give food only for first few days and we don't give anything. I heard that. That's why. <laughs> so that's food why is, is yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's really. So yes, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, we, we normally want people to spend here two, three weeks. Three weeks is a good time. Oh. Three weeks is a good time. And uh, was there anything else that I missed? If you're speaking, you're on mute. Um, could you please unmute yourself and share? Someone mutes me again and again. So anyway, huh, so the, oh, the only question is that uh, I'll write to you yeah. uh, immediately and yeah. I'll, I'll have to need to ask you what are your slots which are available because yeah. I realized that in this month you don't have any vacancy or something mm -hmm. i was seeing mm -hmm. online yeah, yeah. So i'll write to you personally and i'll actually definitely... you need to write to us uh, at least uh, we we ask ideally for in one month advance but you could be it could be little less also okay. but uh, this is how much time we need to to get into communication before you arrive here okay i'll definitely do that mm -hmm. thank you so much yeah, well. yeah. Um, unless someone I... has a question i would like to ask you please go ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. Anisha, uh, if you could just, uh, if we could ask you just one last question about if you could comment a little bit on, I suffer from a lot of migraines and vertigo. Mm -hmm. So a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually this, uh, this talk is more about the career options <laughs> and not on health tips. Uh, but uh, yeah, still I would uh, take that question. And uh, uh, most people are suffering from one thing or other, and we we are, we keep on repeating one thing that uh, rather than focusing on the diseases, people should be focusing on the health. And once you focus on the health, and how we define the health is this: that you don't have any disease means you are at ease, you are comfortable, you don't have symptoms, you are not eating any medicines, and you don't have restrictions as well. So when all these conditions are met, then you are healthy. And for healthy, we like to use the word of Hindi, which is swast. And swast, we uh, put it like this, that swast is made of two parts, swa plus sthit. And so swast is the one who is situated in himself or herself, means that it is the one who is having a very good connection between the body and mind and the surroundings. And that way, that way, then you really don't fall sick. Or if you fall sick, uh, then the, the, the mechanism all, all, always sets in and that takes care of you without you actually knowing the details of that or without knowing the concept about that, like the rest of the wildlife does without having all long fancy scientific explanation or thinking they will just heal them. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, can I ask one question? Sure. Yeah, uh, Dr. Vipin, I see that, uh, you know, a lot of issues are related, of course, to the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, much of what you are also saying, you know, our obsession around the disease, so uh, I see that a lot of, and even I really like the way you looked at the word uh, swast and you didn't use the other word arogya, which is a kind of negation of uh, saying not having a, so I mean, rather than it, that seems to be more like a disease approach. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, sir, is uh, from a psychological point of view, I'm not trying to bifurcate psychology, the mind from the body here when I ask this, mm -hmm. but you know, what is the mindset that is kind of helpful? Otherwise, most of us are preoccupied of a fear of missing out and insecurity, mm -hmm. and that kills also the immune system. If I'm not yeah, wrong. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so primarily i don't separate the mind from the body but if i have to then again i would go to that uh, classical division of the mind the subconscious and the conscious mind and uh, i believe that uh, our conscious mind has been expanding a lot because we have been studying a lot we have been studying mathematics we have been studying science we have been planning we have been putting a strategy into the action we have been comparing and we have been getting a lot of information so that way our conscious mind is continuously expanding a lot but this is having happening at the cost of subconscious mind so our subconscious is continuously shrinking because the total sum is same so we are expanding your consciousness and shrinking your subconscious part in my opinion subconscious is much more important much more efficient and much more valuable uh, and the all the vital vital life processes actually have been given to the subconscious because conscious is dealing with the external world so dealing with the external world is a complicated stuff number 1 and number 2 because it deals to the externalities it is easily corruptible as well now i always give an example how efficient could be subconscious and uh, the conscious you can do many things consciously like we are talking consciously we are participating in this event consciously there are many things happening where you have no conscious control like i have no conscious control on my kidneys i have no conscious control on my liver on many things there is one thing where you have a conscious and subconscious both the control like your breathing you can breathe consciously you can take shallow breath you can take deep breath you can take long breath the way you may like or you may stop your breath for few moments consciously and subconsciously we are breathing from the moment we were born and when you try to breathe consciously then you become tired very soon in few minutes and you would not like to continue it because it it demands so much energy so much resources it's such a messy affair and at the other hand we have been subconsciously breathing even while sleeping when awake in all the situations right from the moment we were born and that is the difference that subconscious is very vital vital is very important and is very efficient so all the life processes have been designated most of them designated to the subconscious and we thereby need to actually enhance expand our subconscious and that can happen only by limiting our conscious thank you so much dr and, and how do we how do we limit the conscious is this that i i always suggest to not to enter into into many mindful activities and and uh, go to the physical activities so use your body whole and when you are using your body whole then your resources gets uh, dis- divided distributed proportionately and then you don't spend a huge amount through the conscious mind that way you can enhance your subconscious mm. thank you sir thank you so i think uh, it's already 7 and uh, anything like uh, we can close the session but before that dr bipin if you like to just like you know share something before we close um, yes yes i mean i th- i like to again say one thing this the same thing once again because I, in the beginning i sounded little like this that it's a little very complicated career option for anybody you got to be into this for several years there are legalities involved and you got to have some expertise Uh, i like to put uh, this thing once again that health is extremely important for everybody if you are not healthy you can really not relish your life so health is the true wealth and uh, and uh, so everybody should be having understanding of the health whether you are practicing it as a career or not doesn't matter but 
even to be able to live a good life you need to be an expert in the health and you should not actually be be kind of uh, 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 giving this this task to some third person so don't outsource your health i would say so i would say that look into it become a, a health expert even if you have not to take up this as a career option thank you so much and i yeah. just uh, if we haven't answered any questions so um we will try and like you know uh, get back to you uh, with your uh, questions um also we i will again put it in the chat um, uh, the website of sehat one and you can go and explore and like you know get in touch with dr wibin um thank you yeah, once sure. again for being here yeah yeah it has been an and, interesting time for me also Yeah thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much.